Yeah, thanks, thanks for being here. This is really exciting. I'm Steve Tuck, co-founder, CEO of Oxide. And I uh, want to talk a little bit about the kinds of customers that are using Oxide today, the kinds of industries that we are deeply engaged in, uh, and uh, in, in a few use cases that we can, uh, that we can share with you. Um, these are not exclusive to the segments that we operate in, but we operate within, uh, we've seen a lot of traction in these segments. I think what, what kind of binds certainly federal and finance and maybe energy and, and, uh, and healthcare are you've got these big uh, IT infrastructure environments that require a lot of data to still remain on-premises, applications that remain on-premises. We, uh, we also see that within these demographics, these are all cloud-educated folks. They've gone through the journey of appreciating the, bet, the value of cloud computing. Um, and, and they now want to see that same value on premises. To go into some specifics, so the public sector, I, I mentioned this earlier, definitely not a place that we decided to start. Uh, they, they kind of kicked our door down and um, there are a lot of initiatives happening right now in the federal space, one of which is the Digital First Public Experience Initiative. Uh, I think I saw something like 4% of government documents are digital. I mean, we all experience this on a daily basis. And you're, half of those are PDFs. And, and half of those, yeah. It, it, and and you, 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 I mean, the, the, the higher level issue is just velocity. And, and there is not, there's just so much drag in the system. And the good thing is, they, these agencies want to do something about it. And they're challenging the status quo and challenging the norms of what has been in place to date. And that's good for all of us. It's going to be good for us as uh, consumers of these agencies. Uh, but... In particular, uh, a, a federal agency uh, and, and one entity within that had long been for, for the things that could not run in the public cloud, had long been kind of a three-tier infrastructure uh, deployment environment, you know, the, the usual suspect for uh, hypervisor and orchestration, uh, server OEM storage, et cetera. And they gave a good anecdote. They said, you know, we have these very talented security engineers, $346 an hour that the taxpayer pays. And they spend 60% of their time doing like VMware license management and BIOS updates and cobbling together systems and infrastructure and chasing bugs. And what if what, what we're supposed to be doing is when customers show up and ask us to run a project, and if they, could, if they could immediately go focus on that project, how much more efficient would we be? How much more velocity would we gain out of that? Uh, so the thesis was, what if we can get a cloud computing appliance from Oxide? We can drop this in and we can start using this for these new projects customers show up. The other anecdote they shared is that from the time a, a customer would come in and say, hey, we want you to go to this security research project, it would take on the order of three months, saying, like, here's the bomb, give, bring all the goods, we'll wire it together, then we can start doing some real work. What if we could do it in like an hour, a minute? How much faster can we start the, the moving on these kind of initiatives? And I think overall you're seeing from the highest levels in the federal government, how they start to act a little bit more like startups in the good ways. And so we have, um, we are deployed and you, 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 someone on the, on the stream asked the question of like, who are the customers and what's that, what's the, what's the deployment model look like? And so as you can imagine, you're bringing this oxide rack into an environment that's full of all sorts of non-oxide stuff. Um, this connects in via BGP. Uh, one of the questions we had early on is like, how are networking teams gonna, gonna think about this, right? It's like, no, 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 you don't pick the switch, I pick the switch. Uh, I'm a Cisco shop, I'm a Arista shop. Um, so we were thoughtful about it up front. I think we were still wary of how that was gonna go. A bit to our surprise, that demographic, that group has been one of our strongest supporters once they saw the kind of telemetry and the visibility they get in the system. They're used to like bump in the night, they get blamed and they start dropping like Wireshark taps all over the place trying to figure out where the problem is. So having something that actually surfaces the problem and allows them to understand where that congestion or bottleneck was um, and having some more telemetry than they've had before gives them that kind of like, wait, there, there, there is gonna be a better way here. Um, we go in, you deploy, uh, you know, again, within a day, you are deploying applications and being able to start validating the system. They've gotten all the way through the validation phase, then started putting their first production application on, and then their second, and their third. And seeing that go from validation through production, and then kind of like the next, the next marker is when they say we want more. And so 
Um, in the in the, we've got a lot of of uh, energy in the public sector. Uh, we do think that this is a very good fit. There's a lot of stuff around again these digital initiatives and uh, securing critical infrastructure, where having cloud computing at the edge that can be used for secure data is an important capability. Um, because we are now on the other side of some early customer deployments, what's fun is we're actually seeing some real results. These were promises to folks like, oh, we, we, should, we should take a look at this new company with an early product. Uh, and, the, and, and for them to be able to go through and see these times, uh, the time to value collapse down like it has, a bit unexpected to a degree, but uh, kind of had an ML inference project that used to take about three days to ingest all the data, transform it, and kick out the result. Once they toppled this thing over and started using an API-driven infrastructure, a more cloud-like operation, they took that down to six hours. So a real collapse in that, in that transformation timeline. Uh, and then generally, we just love the anecdotes we hear when they share, like in, in chat, a developer just said, dude, I just got a Docker Swarm cluster up in minutes. This is awesome. And you can just like feel the energy of these developers as they are able to move at a speed that they were unaccustomed to moving at. Um, on the, 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 one of these same customers, just back to the transparency conversation about how important it is for us to be open source, open docs. Uh, we were on site with this customer and working on a particular issue with them. And we said, hey, by the way, we just want to let you know, like that other thing that you submitted, we're still working on that. Uh, and they said, oh, no, 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 we know because we can watch it on GitHub. And it kind of like struck us like this, this ability to have that level of transparency with customers, in their words, uh, this is the like truest partnership we have had with uh, an, an IT partner. And uh, transparency is going to be a huge part of that for us. Um, Cloud SaaS is another one. Uh, again, you've got these very large enterprise software companies. I guess they wouldn't probably call themselves enterprise software companies, but software companies that either were born on the public cloud, mostly born on the public cloud, have grown into huge companies and are now at a point where they're asking questions about how do they augment cloud. One reason may be I want to go provide my platform to more than just the data in the public cloud. My TAM is capped by data customers will put in the public cloud. How do I reach the whole economy data? Well, you have to move beyond the public cloud to go do that. And in one of these companies' words, there's no way in hell that I'm going to go like cobble together five vendors worth of stuff. I couldn't even, I couldn't hire the operations team to go build a virtual, like a private cloud. Uh, and so they're, they're excited about the prospect of there being a solution that they can get their software running on. And you can imagine that becoming an appliance. Now they have an appliance, they can go deploy in a colo, they can go deploy in a cross connect to a bank and be able to serve their platform to much, much, much more data. Um, in another example, you can imagine a, you know, an e-commerce company that is uh, in the public cloud for all the right reasons. And when the public cloud is working well, it's great. And when it's not, it's very, very tough. Because you don't know what to tell your customers about why something was slow, why something was unavailable, when it's going to happen again, when it's not going to happen again. And thinking about, well, what if we could take a little bit of control back around the latency and the performance profile of our business? Our customers have assets far flung all over the world and CDNs. What if we could extend our platform to be able to be closer to those customer assets? Could we shave you know, 10 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, 1,000 milliseconds off that latency profile? And if we could, that is, that is like company changing. And again, how do you do that? How do you build a point of presence in a co-location facility where you don't have a cage? Well, you, you kind of need to have a complete cloud in a box. And so um, in the cloud SaaS space, we think is going to be an important area where we're, we're working with folks. Uh, we feel very fortunate with some of the early customers that we have. Um, financial services is another one that I will not have time to mention. But uh, suffice it to say, um, very large Wall Street bank that is, uh, has deployed Oxide and their use case, like many in the financial industry, is how do we get away from the DIY infrastructure that we do and put all those talented engineers back towards building financial services products? Um, so how do you deal with migration? Well, I think you start with, uh, with deployment and greenfield, and you have a, a set of use cases that you're deploying. Um, migration has been aided a bit 
by way of folks adopting public cloud. That, that, that migration from on-prem to public cloud is such a more well-worn path today than it was before that we don't have to recreate a lot of that. And because we are API driven, and yes, there is, our API does not look exactly like another cloud provider's API, but, but the, that sort of architecture and that cloud workflow is very similar. Um, yes, you're gonna rewrite Terraform scripts, but guess what? The Terraform provider that we have is first class. Um, yes, you may have to do things a little bit differently with your Kubernetes orchestration platform that you've built, or, but if you're using OpenShift or if you're using Rancher, um, it's gonna be a very, very well-worn path. And, um, and then of course, we are very, very heavily vested in making sure that is done really well and work closely with you because we know it's gonna be repeatable, the work that we do yeah. in making that migration easy. What about on-premises to on-premises? Let's say they're going from Dell to Oxide. Yeah, so you, you know, I think you wanna, where the customer base that we are most focused in is that that operates at the VM layer. And that's a lot of folks now. Um, and so you have, you know, you've got your checklist. You, you kind of have like, what are your VM templates that you use today? What are the tools that you use today? Kind of do that mapping of how much overlaps with what Oxide provides today. And then, uh, and then just building that connective tissue where it's missing.